Well howdy folks. Today we're taking the Marauder out. A celebration of this car because finally I got this car working perfect. I have had some kind of a surge for a long time and then I ran into problems with I needed a new radiator, power steering pump, uh, upper and lower control arms. So the car is like getting turned into a brand new car and so when I got the car back from the shop here in Alpine, California, the guy told me I'm going to have a code 307. I said, I never had a code 307. <coughs> Excuse me. As soon as I got home, code 307 popped up and that was cylinder 7 misfiring. So what I did is I went on eBay and got myself a motorcraft coil for cylinder 7. And even with my, my hurting back, I was able to put that in. And I'll be darned if all engine problems are now gone. The car runs perfectly, just leaving it in drive. And if it's in fourth gear, there's no more surging. And then when you floor it, there's no more surging. I mean, this car gets up and goes. And my little horsepower meter shows about 350 horsepower. So we're looking pretty good. So today... Just to uh, kill some time and go out in the router, I thought I would go up to Lake Cuyamaca and see if there's any birds up there because I picked myself up a 75 to 300 version 2 Olympus lens. Um, not the best lens in the world, but I've already taken some pretty good pictures. So we'll see how that works out. And once we get up to the lake, I'll bring you back in, although I may do some video on the drive on the way up there so you can kind of see the drive through the mountains and whatnot. So uh, we'll see you in a bit when we get up to the mountains. Don't stop.
Well, here we are. We made it up to this stone wall mine. And I don't know if you can read that. Let's see if we can get in here real close. There we go. Maybe you could pause that. Back in the day, they pulled a lot of gold out of this place. Here's the remnant of the, the mine and some of the stuff they had. And there was a bustling town down there in that little valley down there. Huge, I mean, they had schools, a church, mining operations, everything going on down there. This originally was called the Stonewall Jackson Mine and Jackson got taken off. Guess when that was done? Not recently. It was done pretty much right after the Civil War. <coughs> Excuse me. And they didn't want uh, any repercussions from, you know, Stonewall Jackson. So, pretty neat place up here. Peaceful as all get out. It's about 83 degrees Fahrenheit up here right now. Here, I'll stop for a second. Just listen. Got Mr. Woody Woodpecker up there. Now, I've hiked all over this area. There are trails that take you down to Lake Cuyamaca, which is where I'm going. And it takes about half an hour to take the trails down there. And then for me, it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to get back up. But uh, really nice trails. This is uh, rattlesnake country. I've seen them up here before. Here's a little exhibit they got. March 1870, Discovery. Yeah. 
Got the little gnats around here. Dr. Edwin Allen Stanley was a physician. He supervised the final process of extracting the gold. Mm -hmm. With the use of mercury, what a toxic place this is. And uh, here's Mr. R.W. Waterman. And uh, during the most, well, here, I'll let you read it. Quite a guy. Became governor of California. Amazing. And I wonder if I could use the polarizer here to look through this glass. They got a little diorama here. Let's see if we can adjust that. Well, a little bit. But if you put it right up, you can see. Pretty cool, huh? I love dioramas. Working conditions, oh my goodness. I got claustrophobia and I would not be able to do that. Look at this. Had themselves a boarding house. A school. And from what I read, the little town of Stonewall, I guess, I'd, I've never seen it called the town of Stonewall, but uh, I read that it w uh, the wood was taken away from all the buildings once the place stopped functioning to help build Julian, California, which is probably 30 minutes away up the mountain. Right now I'm at about 4,000 feet elevation and um, Julian is probably about five. On my way home, I'm gonna be going through Mount Laguna. That gets as high as 6,000 feet. Look at this beautiful view. What a place for a cabin. Pretty nice, huh? So back to the Marauder. Here she is in all her goodness. I am entertaining putting her on the market. So I think, you know, I'm 70 and I think it's time to get down to one car. Sure is gonna be hard. But I think I'm gonna get the uh, front and rear bumpers repainted to pretty them up. And over 10 years, I have put in, I made a spreadsheet because I have every receipt. Over 28,000 bucks went into this car fixing her. Because the guy who had her before in Texas almost practically ruined the car, made the car so many things bad. And I wish I had the original rims, but this does look pretty cool. It's got 133,000 miles. It's got 410 gears. It's got the Cobra four valve motor and my little horsepower meter says about 350, give or take. I've added slotted and drilled rotors, ceramic pads, and this car will outrun Porsches on the mountain you saw me coming up. I've done that. And also it's got a Brand new uh, stereo head in it. Works with uh, Android Auto real well. Here's the uh, the business end. Got everything I need. I also, you could see that 
gauge right there on the steering wheel mounted there. It's called a scan two. And what that does is it tells me everything I want to know about the car. And then everything, and I mean everything, that you could possibly want to know about a road trip. So cool. Signature dual exhaust. The body is like perfect. And these, these chassis, some taxi companies have them and they've taken them over half a million miles. Can you imagine? So it's at 133. Got a lot of miles out there, folks. You want to pick up yourself a good copy. July 26th or 27th is a car show. And I'm taking her up there and putting a sign out there to see what people think this car could go for. And I'm going to purty her up and see what happens there. But I don't know, it's really tough because now that I got the car working perfect, I don't know if I want to sell it. <laughs> it sucks. But anyway, we're just going to enjoy the day up here. It's going to be hot up here. No birds, none of that stuff. It's way too late in the day already. So uh, let's hop on down to Lake Cuyamaca. So here we go. Let's uh, let's take her down to Lake Cuyamaca. Beautiful place up here. I've shot some of my best critter shots up here. Back when it was, um, I don't know why it didn't get really super green up here. Because we had like record, almost record rains this winter. And th it just didn't stay as green. But um, had some really, really nice, nice shots up here. To the left there that you see, that goes to a horse camp. And I've uh, walked back there. Pretty nice. Talked to some horse folks. Now oh, we got some people here walking. Human life. How nice is that? Hello. Hello. The little boy loves the Marauder. I'll tell you what, Sonny, you come up with 15,000 bucks and she is yours. Beautiful up here. It is, uh, according to the car, 84 degrees, but the sun is intense. I live at 2,000 feet and this is about 4,000 feet, so I'm 2,000 feet closer to the sun. How's that? But then it's also clean, cleaner air, so you can really feel the sun. Ain't not seeing no critters right now, except for the little squirrels. And that one little squirrel before, earlier in the video, that you saw running in front of the car, I did not get him. I don't like getting them. It, it almost kind of like ruins my day. Anyway, I'll just keep going here. During the winter time, this place, a lot of times, is covered with snow. Don't go where the huskies go. Don't eat that yellow snow. Frank's apple, I think. Big rolling hills. And I have my Veterans Lifetime Pass for State Parks, which works at this place here. Now down at Lake Cuyamaca, it does not work, but I, every year, I get a year pass because I come up here so many times that I thought, you know what, we might as well just buy a pass. Let's get back onto the uh, Marauder Racetrack. But today, I made a pact with myself it's a miles per gallon run. There is no flooring, no passing, no acting like a jerk. And pretty much have to follow 
the speed limit. Now you see I, I'm cutting off. This is how I drive. I, I race online. You've probably seen that on my channel. And it's just fun. Some people say, well, what about an oncoming car? Well, the only time I do that is when I have enough time to get back where I belong. Okay? Man, the car is smooth. I just can't, I can't believe it. All this time, and it was a seven-cylinder coil. I used to work on my cars all the time, and now I'm relying on people to fix the car. They don't always do or find what's wrong. Plus, you save so much money. There's the lake, Lake Cuyamaca. And I brought up that uh, Olympus 75 to 300 F whatever version 2, and it's on my EM1 Mark III. And I came up here to shoot with it. I already got some really good shots of backyard birds. I was using dual Godox flashes placed at different angles to uh, where the birds landed to get their seeds. So it turns out it's a it's really good. And so we're going to go down here. And it looks like they're open today, which is awesome. $10 access fee. I got that covered. Howdy folks. What a day, huh? Yeah. Mountain folk. Now we need to find some shade because a black car needs shade. And oh, right there. That's what I see. Don't you take my spot, girlfriend. We are going to park like a jerk get this car in the shade so there is Lake Cuyamaca and I'm gonna put you on the gimbal and take you downstairs so let's go down and see it so here's here we are Lake Cuyamaca take a boat out whatever you need and the Canadian geese here are chilling. Usually there's like a gazillion here. Hi boys and girls. I mean, they don't even care about humans. Do you care about humans? Not really, right? Let's go for a walk along the shoreline. We got people fishing here. People launch their own boats here, like that one across the way. I wonder. Hello again. Hey, You're kind of on YouTube today. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. You're videoing. Yes. Yeah. Enjoy. When they had the big storm up here, it, this was like torn to pieces. I'm not gonna go out there and bug them guys. But uh, check out the water. That's because of the ducks. Beautiful day though. Let's go on.
Have any luck? Do you have any luck, sir? Nothing? Seen any? <laughs> seen any rattlesnakes? <laughs> okay. Yikes. Don't bother me, I'm fishing. I'm gonna go back up and get the 75 to 300 and come back down here and just shoot some things under the shade of the old maple tree. I've been all the way across over there. I've been around this thing a couple times. There's a trail that goes around. They kind of keep it mowed. And back there where you see the reeds way off in the distance, there's a bridge over there. And yeah, got some really good bird shots back there. Just a beautiful day up here. Could use a little bit of clouds, you know, to spice up the sky. And no, I'm not gonna use AI and stick clouds in there. Don't like that. Well, actually I like it, but I don't use it. I'm not against it. It's, it's another form of art. But my photography is pretty straight up. Uh, there are times when I add sky to say something like this, I'll take a still picture and I have a collection of clouds and skies that I have taken with my camera, real pictures, and I'll do a composite with, with real sky, my real sky, and my real picture. So I don't know if that's hypocritical, but I think that's okay. But uh, today is not really, I don't know if it's not much of a landscape day, but let's head up to the car and I am going to, let's go this way. We'll go up the hill. Nice little deck up there. Not sure what this water tank is for. Hello. Oh, there goes a hawk. O-M-G. Oh, big one. You can see him flying. Ah, oh, he's right there in the tree. So we're gonna have to go hunting. Let's uh, step up here and take a peek. And it's empty, rusty. Okay, now we gotta do this like the Sherpas do when they climb Mount Everest. I take little baby steps. And then uh, at times we gotta rest. So I'll give you kind of this nice panorama here. Nifty. On we go. Oh, the pine needles, the pine trees smell so good. Reminds me of camping. Getting my workout. Heart rate says 123 per minute. Well, hello. What are you eating? Huh? Can you get that down the gullet? Hmm, you did. Good for you. Yep, 
Here we go. Hello, kids. Hello, hello, hello. Uh-huh. I don't know what to feed you. Of course, it's not kosher to do that anyway. Let's go back to the router and end this segment. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna grab the uh, telephoto and see if I can go catch that, that hawk. So, as they say, or as I say, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so that walk was, uh, that was a tough walk coming back up the hill and everything. Problem is I'm wearing a brace, lower brace for my back and it makes my legs hurt. But anyway, I did get some shots with the 75 to 300 of that hawk sitting in the tree. So uh, hopefully those come out really well. And, <coughs> excuse me, ain't not much going on up here at all. It's getting warmer and warmer. So opportunities have gone away completely. Actually, they were gone away hours ago, but it's fun to come up here. And so now it's time to go back home, Alpine, California, where it's gonna be cooler and I could sit and watch some cartoons. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for coming along another ride along with Randy. And as always, I'll see you on the next adventure.